Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing all super well today. This video will be a little bit different to my previous fashion videos and I hope you are interested in it because the idea behind the whole video was I received a lot of questions from my friends, from their friends about traveling during COVID. How is it possible that I could have left Australia, came back? That will be the whole topic of this video. Also, I will be talking about the two-week quarantine process in Sydney Hotel, as well as some restrictions that were placed while I was overseas. If you are interested, please keep watching. I have seen from my Instagram that I've been overseas for five and a half weeks and I just recently returned. I will try to answer all the questions that I have received, also plus more information. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comment box below. I will try to answer all of them. You may know that the situation changes every day, so the restrictions placed while I left could have changed. So it is the best to check the website. Uh, I mean, it's very straightforward and I'm pretty sure you can find all the information there. Without any further ado, let's get started. I have decided to travel to Europe at the beginning of July when my dad got sick. Before you travel, you actually need to buy the ticket. I bought it on Emirates website, it was very easy and straightforward. I set the departure date four weeks from the day when I apply for the exemption to leave because the website stated that they can take up to four weeks to respond to my request. I didn't take any chances, you know, that the tickets will fall or I had to move it or whatever. And I set the return date five and a half weeks from the departure day. Afterwards, I apply for the exemption on the Department of Home Affairs, uh, which is very straightforward. On the website, I will link it below, is like few personal information and then you have to include the ticket number uh, as well as the reasons why you need the exemptions and the supporting documents. They are not necessary, but Obviously, it did help in my case. As I told you, my dad got sick, so I received a doctor report from the hospital about what has happened and that it would be advisable that I will go and see him. Even so, the website states four weeks to respond to this request. I received the reply within five days, which was very surprising. And the request was granted. I started to prepare for my departure. Uh, my the departure ticket has been changed twice, only by one day, so I departed two days later. And the returning date has been changed only once, so I return actually one day later as planned. The Emirates also contacted me beginning of August. If I don't want to fly within two days, that was a little bit too fast for me because I need to fix a few things here and prepare for my departure just in case anything gets worse in Australia or back in Europe. At the end, I departed two days later than I bought the ticket. Both airports Dubai and Vienna request a corona test. Dubai 72 hours before departure and Vienna 42 hours before departure. Well, I have completed my corona test here in Sydney. The results came within two hours, so it doesn't take too long. The Emirates website states exactly what Dubai Airport and Vienna Airport request. So they request to fill in these documents, this Dubai and this Vienna. It is not complicated, it's just simple, I think, administrative work. I print obviously everything out. It is advisable, guys, uh, bring all documents with you. I had them on a the hard drive, I had them printed out because they are necessary. Especially the corona test has to be in printed form because I did travel with passengers who did not have the printed form of the corona test, had to stay at the airport and do the test again and waited for the results so they missed the connecting flight. Guys, have everything printed out, have it filed, have it saved, whatever, just take with you everything. On the day of departure, I arrived to the airport three hours before departure, even so the advisable are two hours. I was lucky I arrived three hours before because I have not expected such a big line and wait for check-in. I waited around one and a half hour to check-in. It was ridiculous. At the airport in Sydney, 
everyone is required to wear masks. That was a requirement as well during the whole flight, the mask had to be worn. You had one station that they were checking passports and other papers that you have. Then you went to the check-in person. The check-in lady had to call the border security just to make sure that I have exemptions to travel. Even so I had the printed form, it was not sufficient. Then she had to call her supervisor to confirm that I can fly. So I found this really ridiculous. Then we went to passport control. It was very easy because there were not many people. On the day there were three flights only from the Sydney airport. So imagine that each flight had half of the passengers, so not really many. If you're asking about tax refund scheme, the office was closed, but there were little kiosk with one person no people waiting whatsoever it was really hard to find but eventually after the passport control the office is navigating me where to go it was easy simple first time in my life i did not have to line up in a long line and wait for a long time the airport looks like a ghost town if you have seen my instagram you would see from the stories how sad it looked i will try to insert all the pictures of the airport that I have taken. All shops have been closed. The only three shops open were pharmacy and two food stores, and that's it. The boarding was very quick since there were half of the passengers. The seating was every second person plus a zigzag. Every single person had to wear masks. The service was limited. We did receive obviously food, but the stewardess were not walking between us as normally they would. I slept through the whole flight from Sydney to Dubai because I'm a really, really good sleeper. On the plane to Dubai, we receive a new set of masks, gloves, and so on and so forth. At Dubai, you did only have to wear the masks. Uh, we've been checked temperature. At Dubai airport, they have, if I'm not mistaken, four terminals, the A and B have been open, the other two being closed. So didn't look like ghost town, but it was a car empty. There were much more flights flying out and in. Shops have been apparently reopened two weeks before I landed in Dubai, so they must have been open beginning of August. So it looked a little bit more busier than, I guess, Sydney Airport. I've been to Chanel and all these boutiques just to check out. Since Chanel just opened it two weeks ago, they even had a lot of, lot of stocks, which was very surprising. And first time in my life, I came across super nice stuff in Chanel. Uh, wherever I traveled around the world, the stuff was not really so nice like there. So heads down to them because they were really, really nice. Afterward, at Dubai airport, they check the papers when boarding and also got the valid negative corona test at vienna airport before passport control there were i guess it was police officers not 100 sure they were checking the valid corona test that is negative and the paper that i told you to fill out then I went through the passport control and I was allowed to leave the airport. The border between Austria and Slovakia were empty. There were no border controls, no checking officers or anything like that. My stay in Europe was really pleasant. The only restriction were in uh, Slovakia in shopping centers, you had to wear masks. The situation worsened while I was there, closing down of shops. Uh, and restaurants, uh, clubs, discotheques have been changed to 11 p.m. As far as I know, and when this video comes live, uh, the situation uh, dramatically changed and uh, they have even restriction to get out and uh, I think all the shops uh, are closed except obviously of necessities. In uh, Austria, at the time of my stay, there were masks required only in uh, restaurants and obviously when you eat you could take them off i traveled quite a lot between slovakia and uh, austria i visited vienna plenty of times and only once at the border i was stopped by austrian border security just to measure my temperature and that was it I traveled to Czech. In Czech Republic there were no restrictions at the time. Everywhere there were like 
half the amount of people that usually there are. It was really pleasant to travel. You could have taken pictures because tourists were not there, but you could have seen that the cities are coming to normal, that I saw visitors from other countries. Obviously they were not in the numbers that usually during summer visit those cities. It was a really pleasant stay. I uh, traveled quite a bit even through Slovakia, I visited different cities and Austria and Czech Republic. Prague was amazing because as I said usually when you go there you face a mass of tourists so this time it was really great. I stayed there for five and a half weeks. My ticket has not changed uh, since my departure and on the way back it was the same requirements so i had to have a valid corona test which i done at vienna airport vienna airport uh, is amazingly organized it's worth paying for the test a little bit more there are several stations one station does the filling of the form then the other station uh, the several officers do the payment and you know entering information and then you are taking upstairs where they take the swab only from the throat not from the nose and results are within three hours from the test i took the flight from vienna to dubai at vienna airport already then there were a little bit more people a disaster was only that i could not find the tax refund scheme office like they usually have if you've got any tax refund definitely arrive to the airport several hours before i was running around the whole airport some of the austrian officers at the airport were <laughs> very nasty they even told me what do i expect during covid the offices are closed and, and so on and so forth at the end i did not give up met a really lovely lady she was waiting at the kiosk where really i passed it i did not see it it was closed and it was so dark but there was a little note to call an officer if you've got any tax refunds because i guess it's only one officer's working at the airport and he's running between the different uh, tax refund schemes points so guys get yourself enough time because i nearly missed the plane and there were so many people behind me afterwards to get the stamp for the invoices i'm advising you to get to the airport a long time before even not so many people are traveling they still shop i guess and they still want the tax refund you do not get money straight away you need to throw the envelopes in the little boxes and eventually you can hope that they will get processed i already received like three four five of them i hope that some of them will still come later on from uh, vienna i traveled to dubai again the masks were compulsory at vienna's airport they checked it that i've got the same document filled out that i needed to fly out for dubai also they checked if i've got a valid corona test i arrived to dubai again only terminal a and b have been opened and the shops still were all open the airport was like half full so it was pleasant to travel to my surprise there were only 30 people on the big plane from dubai to sydney so 30 people in this huge plane is ridiculous i mean it was amazing to travel because i slept like a baby on the plane in each section of the plane imagine there were only a few people and at the back of the plane there was i think one person as i saw so it was really amazing it I guess it will never happen again. I wish it would be like that, but I guess the airplane companies would bankrupt, right? I arrived to Sydney airport a few minutes after 10 p.m. The airport was empty, so there were only 30 of us arriving and uh, we were directed to different section of the airport i haven't been to there were some medical staff waiting for us each of us uh, was of course with mask allocated to one of them they were taking our temperature asking questions if we've been to contact with any covid person or if we have been exposed to anyone with the symptoms after the questioning we went through normal passport control as usual then we collected our luggage and after we 
went depends if you have anything to declare different departments to go through i got to check the luggage the departure was closed and we went to a different part of the airport which again i haven't been to 30 of us were waiting for the officers uh, the police were greeting us and uh, we were taken on the bus there were a little station with a police officer asking who's got exemptions to quarantine there was only one diplomatic personal who did not have to quarantine all of us were taken on two buses each bus had 15 people i think and the other one 14 i guess <laughs> the police officers and army officers at the airport were taking our luggage on the buses there was one person per two seats on the bus so my bus had 15 people unfortunately they were a little bit unorganized because we had to wait on the bus for an hour at the airport doing nothing it was a little bit tiring after a 24 hour flight afterwards we were finally taken to Sofita Wentworth in a city only to find out that they had only 11 rooms available four of us uh, had to be transferred to different hotels therefore we had to wait another like half an hour or 40 minutes on the bus until they figure out where the rest will go uh, there were four volunteers who agreed to go to Meriton's apartments we were checking into the hotel by four so four from the bus were allowed to get out they took us one by one obviously we had to wear masks the check-in person at the hotel just took our name and asked for any special food requirements i opted for gluten-free food which i regretted later on then we were allocated two army officers for each of us who took our luggages right before the lifts there were station and there were like three police officers who checked our passport and uh, we had to give the, obviously again the details and emergency contact details then the army officers took us upstairs to the room i was on the 17th level of the sofita wentworth and the army officers had obviously the key to the room they let me in and a two weeks quarantine started in the hotel well what can i say to you about quarantine wouldn't it be nice to be quarantined at home yes it would why don't they do it and give them some bracelet to monitor where we are i have no idea because i think it would be much cheaper even for australian government the quarantine in australia costs three thousand per person then there are different prices for couples and couples with kids or a single person with the kids before i was advised that i will receive the invoice on departure however the invoice has not been received i received it a couple weeks after arriving home all australian traveling and undergoing quarantine who bought the tickets after midnight the 12th of july it means who bought a ticket from 13th of july 2020 are responsible for these fees I bought the tickets before, so I thought I will not be invoiced. However, I did receive the invoice. And again, in Australia, you need to apply for exemption to pay this fee. I did apply after arriving to the hotel quarantine. They said it would take a couple of weeks. It took a month to receive an answer. You obviously have to supply the documents that when you bought the ticket if the ticket has been changed you have to supply all the tickets all the changes and so on and so forth after i received the uh, exemptions to pay the fees it was the most funny thing i had to call a revenue office so that they do not collect the fees from me because you have a limited time to pay it and if you don't pay it on time obviously interest is incurred that was another thing to do besides that the hotel is five star hotel I would not give it even two stars the hotel is definitely not five star hotel the room was not clean enough i don't care that it's a small room but it should be at least like properly dust off the carpet was dirty the shower head was leaking uh, waste of water and the food i can't even talk about the food i'm pretty sure if there will be some animal even the animal wouldn't eat it that's how bad it was i can't even describe it to you but i'll show you some pictures and you be the judge it was bad <laughs> i'm still so shocked that somebody can actually send such a food out and yeah i mean 
It was horrible. Uh, the only thing that I've ever eaten was cornflakes because they were delivered like from the shop vacuum packaging, so it was okay. And I really thank to my friends who were there for me and a uh, special two of you guys, you are amazing. They were delivering my coffee every day, my food, otherwise I would not survive because all the food ended up in the bin and I'm so sorry for that, but it was just not eatable. The, the delivery and everything was allowed. We were given all the paperwork, what we can, what we can't. We could not open the door. We could not get out of the room. And the hotel has only two levels with balconies. So since the hotel was full, I was on the top level, no windows whatsoever. So that was a little bit depressing not to have a fresh air, especially because the air con, I'm a little bit allergic, but guys, two weeks is not end of the world for me. It got positive out of it. Look, I started my YouTube channel, so I am more than happy with a two-week quarantine. I did not mind. I just did mind the food and I did mind that there was no fresh air. I feel sorry for the people who feel claustrophobic, who can't be alone because there are people in this world who can't be alone. And yeah, I'm not one of them. I love to be alone. Anyhow, when you logged in to the hotel internet, there was even your satisfaction survey. Wow, they should not have done it. So I told them what I think first time. First time, nothing has happened. Second time, one of the managers called me. She was super nice because I told them how dirty the room is. Uh, they supplied to me a vacuum cleaner. Everything was dropped off actually in front of the door. You could open the door when you picked up stuff. Uh, that was delivered to you. Well, after the vacuum cleaner was delivered, I understood why the rooms are so dirty because it was broken. Here is the picture and um, yeah, I tried to clean the room because I exercised on the floor, unfortunately, so it was dirty and dusty. The food, she promised that they will not supply me three apples a day for breakfast, lunch and dinner. I think they stopped two days later, but the food has not improved whatsoever. Uh, I am not 100 percent sure how it is done, who make the food. The hotel told me that the chef makes the food. If that's the case, and he's a French, it's the first French that I ever met that can cook. If it was outsourced company, the government should look into it because it's horrendous. The third time when I fill up the satisfaction survey, I did say, why should I complain when there are no action whatsoever? I can't be bothered. That's what I wrote. Two managers call me. The manager of the shift and I think the manager of beverages. On that day actually when they called me, I remember it was Sunday because I received a really nice breakfast from a friend of mine and not even a one hour later the manager organized it and I got a gluten-free pizza which obviously I could not eat after like just eating breakfast and finishing breakfast and two hours after the pizza I received a gluten-free burger which looked amazing with the chips and everything but guys like Okay, I eat a lot, I love food, but that was a little bit too much even for me. Unfortunately, I could not finish it. Uh, there was no microwaves to warm it up, so yeah, it ended up in a bin, I'm sorry. It was like one off and the food afterwards was the same what before. So what was the point? I'm not sure. I really am not sure. Besides the food, I had my routine every morning. I exercised, then I did some phone calls, emails, and as I said, I started my YouTube channel, so I had to do a lot of editing. So I was busy through the day, and at night I watched a couple hours TV, and then midnight I was in bed. I had pretty good routine. 14 days went past like this. I did not have issue. The hotel did organize. One evening we had band playing outside uh, that was fun actually and once they organized a theater online but i did not take part of it because i was busy there were nurses calling us every single day to check up on our health if we have developed any symptoms or how we feel there were psychologists available 24 hours in the hotel just in case anyone would have any problems to deal with the situation i can reduce it so i can uh, judge. We've been tested the second day and the 10th day. Two medical staff knocked on the door. They did not enter the room, but they just 
took swab from the throat and nose. The day before departure, I received a visit from two medical staff and two police officers. The medical staff measured temperature, asked me if I've got any symptoms, a little bit how I feel, blah, blah, blah. And then gave me a mask for departure and the disinfection. The police officer asked me what time I would like to leave, uh, five or six. So obviously I opted for five on Friday. Depending on the day and time when you arrive, you will be allocated the day and time when you're leaving because you could have left either in the morning or afternoon. So since my flight was in the evening, I could leave the hotel Friday between five and six. The police officer handed me two papers. One paper stated that I did complete two weeks quarantine and the other paper stated that I had no positive COVID tests. Then the police officer handed you with this paper bracelet uh, that stated COVID and on the other side Friday. So that I am leaving Friday, which I found very amusing, especially because nobody ever checked it when I was leaving. I wore a jacket and it was underneath, so I'm not sure what was the point. On the day of departure, obviously, I packed and I was ready at 5 o'clock, but I guess the whole floor was already at 5 o'clock. The hotel was so unorganized. There were three people from the hotel trying to organize people, taking lift, going downstairs and checking out. It was sort of not possible because they were calling different numbers, obviously room numbers. I have to tell you, we were numbers, we were no names. So they called up numbers who should come down, who should check out. The hotel personnel were confused as well. Uh, so people were really unhappy because they were calling these numbers one after another, but the lists were not available. It was so much fun. But uh, bottom line is I was waiting 40 minutes for the lift on the floor. And obviously you could not go back to the room because we did not have a key. Once the room closes, bad luck. After the lift took me down and it was my turn, the Police officers were waiting in front of the lift. Again, the same, like three desks, three police officers. And um, they checked just the passport and the two papers that the police officers handed me in the day before. And I was ready to go. They just asked me how I am getting home. And that's how it finished. They escorted me out of the hotel, helped me with my luggage. It was super sweet from them. So guys, that's it from today's video. I hope I included all the information that would be helpful to you. And if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comment box below. I will try to answer all of them. As I said, the best is to go on the Border of Security website or the Department of Home Affairs. If you are flying out of Sydney or to Sydney, check also the website from the country where you are flying from because each country has different restrictions and you need to adhere to them if you are about to travel if you are returning to australia or you know traveling anywhere please travel safe and stay healthy uh, i hope to see you in my next video thank you so much for your support i really appreciate it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel i would really appreciate it Take care of yourself, guys. Ciao.